In the last episode, I've shown you how to lay a solid concrete base for your workshop. And in this episode, we will start to build out the timber walls. Also, I'm giving away this pretty handy tape measure. And if you want to know how you can win it, make sure to stick around until the end of the video. Now, earlier last week, heavies came along and dropped off all of the timber that I'm going to need to build both the walls as well as the roof. I now need to spend probably most of the day moving this into the back garden. And trust me, carrying all of that to the end of my garden took a really long time. I decided to move all of the wood over three days because doing it in one hit would have been too much. Man, I feel like my arm's gonna fall off. All of the timber that I'm going to be using today is this. This is four inches by two inches. This is going to give you a very structurally solid build. You can go for slightly thinner pieces of timber, but I didn't want to mainly because this is a workshop and I'm going to be hanging quite a lot of things off of the walls. And on the outside of all of our framed walls, we will be applying this 18 mil OSB3 sheeting. And before we start to build the walls this morning, I have just gone around the edges and flapped over all of that damp proof membrane, just so it's not getting in our way. If I'm honest, I do slightly regret taking up the framing around the outside. I think in hindsight, I probably would have left that on until after the walls were built. But we are where we are. I feel like I've been blessed by the weather gods today because every day this week it is forecast not to have rained. And I'm not joking, every single day we have had a pretty much torrential downpour. So to have a sunny, albeit chilly day like this really is a blessing. And we are going to be starting off by building the back wall. And the main reason that we are building the back wall first is because it is the simplest one. This is just a long rectangular wall with no windows, no doors, so it will be really good to get us into the flow of things. I'm not going to be going through all of the measurements in this video because in the description you will find detailed plans which are free for you to download and you can reference them as you need to. All I am going to say about the back wall is it is five and a half meters wide and it will be 2,180 millimeters tall. So let's get on with it. Okay, so we're going to start off by cutting down all of the four by twos to the correct height for the back wall. Whilst I've got Chris here cutting them down, I'm going to be screwing them together over on the concrete. But when it actually comes to plasterboarding the walls on the inside, I do want to make sure that the back wall has somewhere for the plasterboard to actually attach onto. And the way I'm going to mark out where this next piece of wood needs to go is by just getting an off cut here and marking exactly where that will fall. So I know that when I drill the side wall into here, that is gonna come up to here. So I want to now fix my next piece of wood right there. Now I want every single one of these uprights to be spaced apart by 400 millimeters, which is right here on the tape measure. However, what I don't want to do is measure it every single time. So in order to speed this up, I am going to get Chris to cut me a little off cut that I'll just slide in here and then butt the wood up against. So 400 minus the width of one of these, that's 355 millimeters that we need an off cut cut to, Chris. So now you can see why these pieces are useful because we can just stick them in between each of the uprights and then we're not having to mark out with a tape measure every single time where the 400 spacing should be. Now, because the length of the workshop is five and a half meters long and the longest piece of four by two that I could find was 4.8 meters, we have just had to cut off the extra here and we're gonna be attaching them or bracing them together using one of these pieces. So the plan here is just to position this, which is the exact gap in between the two uprights using a couple of screws, and then that will make up for the full length and we'll be able to finish off the back wall. So this is the back wall done. That took just over one hour. And just to get a feel for the height, we're gonna lift it up just to check everything looks right. Three. That's big. The next thing we want to do is actually put the OSB sheets on this. And the reason we're doing that is we know that the OSB sheets come out of the factory perfectly square. So we'll be able to use these to sort of pull this into square. These are quite heavy. So this is about to go from heavy to very heavy. So you can see here that now we've put that OSB sheet on. We are dead straight with this edge. But it is ever so slightly not quite on it there. So we're just going to use some screws to pull the frame into shape. And the way we do this is by putting a set of screws along one edge of the OSB and then pushing the side of that panel so it butted up nicely against the frame 
and that should be enough to pull everything into shape. Now, right here, it looks like the frame is actually bowing inwards a little bit, and there's a nice little trick I've got for pulling it out. So I'm gonna put a screw in here, and I'm gonna grab a hammer, pull that out ever so slightly. So we know that that's now square and the rest of these will be falling in lovely. And now obviously the OSB board that we've put on this is currently its full length. So we do just want to make sure that the top of it is actually cut off so we don't have any dangling above the top of the workshop. And to do that, we are going to use this Evolution track saw. <laughs> so the back wall is now built. The OSB has been screwed onto it and this is leaning up against the fence. It did weigh an absolute ton. So I'm not sure how anyone would do this on their own. So make sure you've got a friend with you. The next thing we're going to do is build the two side walls. And because this is leaning against the fence, we have the whole of the concrete area to do that on. Once we've got the two ends built, we'll screw this together so we don't have to put all of that weight on the fence because I am a bit worried it's gonna fall down. I did just want to take a second to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Evolution Power Tools. The star of the show today has got to be this cordless miter saw, which is going to do every single cut that we need today on the two eight amp hour batteries that I've got connected to it. I've also really been enjoying using the Evolution impact driver and drill with the five amp hour batteries connected to them, both of which lasted the entire day. And if you like the sound of any of those tools and you're looking to buy them yourself, then before you do, make sure to use the discount code SUMMARY at the checkout to receive an exclusive 10% off anything that you order. Now the sidewall that we're doing here doesn't have a window in it so this should be fairly straightforward to do. The only difference with the side is that these do need to have a fall on them and that is for the roof to make sure that the water can run off of the roof and into the guttering that's on the back. Now building regulations stipulate that a flat roof should have a pitch of 1 in 80 which means for every 80 centimetres it needs to drop one centimeter. So we are going a little bit above that, and that's a good thing. The width of this side wall is 2.8 meters. The difference between the back and the front is 70 mil. So we are gonna cut seven uprights in between here, each one 10 mil longer than the previous. And what that should give us is seven perfectly distance out uprights that allow for the fall on the top. So now with that slanted side piece done, we have put on one of the OSB sheets. And again, that's just to make sure that it is square for the reasons that I said earlier on. And then we'll do the other pieces once we've actually got these two sides screwed together. So the reason we have lifted up this side without all the bits in is this end is going to have a window in. And whilst it's all well and good having a plan sometimes you do just need to eyeball things as you go and the thing that I wasn't sure of is how high I actually want that window off of the ground and sort of where I want it positioned I think looking at this now I do want it further in that side of the wall as opposed to central so I do think that we'll butt it up against here the other thing we need to do is just make sure that as we push these walls in that this polythene is nicely pushed back now this is essentially acting as a damp proof membrane between the wood and the concrete. So if any moisture does come up through the concrete, it isn't gonna penetrate into the wood and cause a damp issue there. Now, as you can see, this is the second of the side walls. So this also has the slanted roof. The only difference is this one does have a window in it. Now I haven't gone through and read out all the measurements again, because you can find the free plans to this build in the description of the video. The main things that you need to know is that this window is gonna rest on this piece here. And we've made sure that it is very well supported underneath because these double glazed windows do have quite a lot of weight to them. You just wanna make sure that that's not gonna go anywhere. So we are just going to get this next one finished up and then we'll actually be able to get the three walls together and start to get a feel for how big this workshop will be it's exciting good okay so that is three of the walls done which means we are finally ready to start actually putting these in position i'm just going to go and put little man inside because i don't want to crush him He's enjoying it. And then the next thing we are going to do is actually screw all of these together. And I've decided to leave this footage in as a warning to why you should always have one person holding a wall. As if you tried to catch that. Fair play. You're right. Yeah. Luckily, Chris was absolutely fine and didn't break both of his wrists. And we definitely learned a lesson moving forwards that day. God, do you imagine if it hit a camera? And now that these walls are in, we are just checking all of the corners of the three. 
just to make sure that they are perfectly square and that one is looking bang on. So the next thing we want to do is just drill a few holes in the bottom frame here, the bottom plate, and using these concrete screws, uh, drill about every meter or so around the edge. So one thing that has changed today is as we've been building this, I've realized that two windows and the door with glass is probably too much. So I am going to take Mark's advice from start making woodworking and just have the one window and one door. Me and Chris have just made up this part of the wall for the front. So we're going to get this in. Okay, so we have put that bit of the front in. Chris is just carrying in this other little small piece here. We'll need just screwing in, yeah? Yeah. Now most of the front wall is actually done. We've got these two little bits on. We are just cutting these slightly shorter. And the reason that they are slightly shorter in terms of the height is because there is gonna be a two by six, or actually two two by sixes bolted together going along here. And that's gonna give the strength above the door to hold all of the two by sixes for the rafters as well. Um, so we're just gonna get this last bit built up and then we will put the six inch beam along the top. Okay, so the last thing that we are doing before we finish up for the day is just getting this beam braced along the top. Okay, so we are coming up to the time where we need to call it a day, but we have got most of the walls and framing done in the six hours that we allotted today, which I think is actually a really good job. I've had a bit more time this morning to check the levels of all of the walls and make sure that the distance between the end walls and the side walls are consistent and luckily everything was bang up the only thing that i have noticed this morning is that this bit isn't right if i put a spirit level on this side of what will be the french doors on the front of the workshop i am out probably by almost an inch which means it's leaning that way just a little bit and just to explain a little bit more about the cause of the leaning side here essentially what needs to happen is this whole bit as i'm pulling it in hopefully you can see that that needs to sort of be permanently pulled in that position and putting the osb on the outside of this little panel here should fix that so i'm going to cut down the osb that i need to that size and then i've got my dad turning up in a minute because this really is a two-person job just to get that pulled in once i've done that i will cut down the beam that goes above it just to make sure it fits in there with that problem out of the way i could now move on to fitting the rest of the osb on the walls the bit i just cut was to fill in this panel here but check this out. This is the off cut. Don't you just love it when that happens? Result. So I was about to use a full panel for underneath this window here on the end, but I just realized that this would be a really useful place to use up all of those off cuts that I've got from doing the walls. So I've just cut them down and I just need to run through and actually get these on. So now we have covered all of the outside of the walls in this OSB. The last thing we need to do is just cover all of this in a permeable felt, which will protect it from the weather should it rain and it is likely to rain and it's also breathable. So if the wood does sweat, it allows that moisture to be released as well. And luckily, fitting this felt to the side of the walls is a very straightforward thing to do we found it was a lot easier for the bottom layer to draw a pencil line using a spirit level and then we knew exactly where this felt needed to touch before it was stapled on for the remaining two layers above that we could just follow the lap line which is this gray line here to make sure that the felt was landing in the right place and even though this felt isn't fully waterproof it's certainly going to go a long way in helping keeping that osb board dry before i clad it in a few weekends time and that is the walls fully felted and a temporary tarp up that's everything for this episode if you're enjoying this series so far then please do consider subscribing smash that like button and i'll see you next time when we start building the roof. <laughs>